2010 Mazda 3. I believe it's got a 2.3 liter turbine powered. It needs an engine because it's making a, a little bit of a clanking noise down below. So let's get the uh, battery reconnected. Oh good, it's got power left in it. You saw the spark action. Bzz. Yeah, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. We're gonna spin it around, back it into the third stall there, and we gotta drop the cradle out of this unit to get the engine out. Go ahead and fire it up, Dave. Let's see if she's gonna run. Oh yeah, look at that. Clackety clack. All right, let's do it before she dies. Oh no. Parking brake. Is it stuck? Yeah, it's stuck. Just gas on it. Not doing so hot. Hey, the brake released. Oh, it died again. This thing stinks. Yeah, it smells. It's got a stench to it. Yeah, she's definitely unhappy on the bottom end. It's winking at us. So we're gonna back it in, we're gonna rack it up. I wanna go ahead and pull the uh, oil out of it. I'm gonna drop the oil and see, uh, see what kind of oil we have inside of this unit. And then uh, we're gonna proceed to drop this engine out of here and uh, get it swapped out with a uh, new one. We've got one uh, over here on a pallet. Uh, showed up a couple weeks ago, like I said. Uh, same 2.3 liter, turbine powered. This one uh, does not have the turbo on it, I do not believe. So we will have to, oh yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, she's got the turbo right here. So I'll say, that's good. So we don't have to swap the turbo out. Now the scary part here is how much oil or metal debris may or may not be in the oil. Uh, trouble being is since this is turbo powered, there's probably some oil feed lines to that turbo. And if that's full of metal, then uh, our turbo bearings might not be in the best of condition. So this is all stuff we need to look at. The due diligence must be performed uh, to make sure we don't have to do this job again uh, for free 99 because I love my job, but not so much to do it twice when I got to pay for it. There we go, that's good and set up. We're good on this side, Dave. Here, let's just check the uh, dip and stick real quick. See what's going on in here. Ooh. That looked like brand new oil. I know what happened here. Yeah, it's new oil, kind of low. I believe that uh, it started clicking and clacking down below and they went and changed the oil on it uh, to no avail. That's what it uh, appears to be the situation here. Okay, step one, let's get all the engine oil drained out of it. Step two, let's get the coffee can out of the oil drain. Yeah, as we saw earlier outside, there's a little bit of a patina building up on these rotors. That is a uh, surface rust just from ambient moisture in the atmosphere. This thing has not been uh, driven around for many, many, many months. It's been here, uh, like I said earlier, I think about uh, maybe about a month or so, six weeks. No worries though, as you drive, that stuff will polish right off because it's not deep into the metal. It's just like a surface rust that occurs. Yeah, see that? Okay, oil drain. Let's see what comes out of here. Was that a 17 right there? Looks like it. Okay, let's get this drain plug out and just see how much nasty is inside of here. Unclickage. Oh. Let's see what we get. It's probably gonna be pretty clean oil because that's what was on the dipstick, but maybe we'll find some chunks of metal. Yeah, that oil looks fantastic. It's fairly new. I don't see any sparkles in there. Do you guys see anything? I'm not seeing it. Okay. I have an idea. Since the uh, oil is not going to tell us much, let's take the filter and get a hold of it. That's on there tight. Oh, come on, Loop Tex. Too tight. Ugh. Yeah, let's take the filter. And I'm gonna cut it off. Thanks, Dave. He's got a filter wrench handy. 
we're gonna get this filter. I said cut it off. We're gonna cut it open and take a look inside. And we're gonna see if there's any metal pieces inside of this filter. I don't really imagine we're gonna find much because I believe that they uh, changed the oil and maybe probably could have thrown bearings in this or something. If we look uh, real close right here, this is fresh RTV sealant. So someone's had this pan off fairly recently. Uh, perhaps they were doing that in an attempt to, uh, to solve this issue right here. So I think before we get started, we're gonna cut this filter open, see if there's, see if there's metal in it. We might find something, we might not find anything, but it's worth a look-see. And after we get into this filter a little bit, we're gonna come back over here to the vehicle, take the pan off, and then we're gonna take a look at the bearings. So, since we already have this huge, gaping, blown up engine mess over here on the table, uh, we'll just use this area for our filter autopsy. Get rid of that. I'll throw, down a, I'll throw a pig mat down, an oil absorption mat, and then uh, we can get that, uh, that filter opened up and take a look inside. Give it a flip. There, now everything that drains out won't saturate my table. Yeah, guys, all this, this is a three liter Ford diesel, also found in Land Rovers. It suffered massive catastrophic failure. There's a hole in the side of the block, so we did a tear down on it to see what happened. Long story short, this is what we found. Uh, many of you have seen this video as of today. Some of you have not, but if you have not, just uh, check this link to, or the link inside of this video's description, and it will take you back to the tear down slash autopsy of that Ford three liter eco diesel slash Land Rover motor. Okay, let's see if there's, oh, there it is. Look, found it, found it right away. Bunch of sparkle action. As soon as I managed to dump this, look. Oh, gravity. Camera gravity. Look at all the sparkles coming out of that filter right there. Okay, we're on to something, but that does not mean that I'm not going to cut this open. Not by a long shot. We're, we're cutting it open for sure. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of metal dumping out of this filter, so we definitely have something to let go uh, in the bottom end of this engine. So what we've got here, a couple little roller bearings and a little blade right, right there, like on your can opener. You're gonna put the filter in there, spin it around. It's gonna run across the blade and then cut open the uh, filter case right there. Then we can separate it, take it apart and look at the pleats inside to see how much metal is actually in there. I know how much is in there. All of it, it's all in there. Too tight. Ha, I cut my towel, you see that? That was cool. I know, I'm just a big kid. Okay, we're getting through. I'm doing this by feel. Every time it gets real easy to turn, I give it a little bit of a tighten on the rod here, and it will push that blade inward slightly, creating more pressure for cutting. Come on now. You know, I need to get like a, a set of, like the master set of oil filter cups, and then I can put that cup on the end of an impact gun and use a gun to do this. That might be really cool to see and do. And it'll save my flanges from fatigue. Okay, we're getting through it. More cutting. There we go. We're in and there's metal dumping out. A whole bunch of it. Yeah, this thing's loaded full of nasty. Throw some more light on the subject. Yeah, look at that. That's all metal pieces right in here. Let's pull this, uh, this filter out if it's gonna come out. I may need to pry it out of there. Yeah. Here, let's try a, a pry driver here for the win. There it goes. Okay, can you guys see? Look in there, oh yeah. It's full of metal inside of that filter. I think that's all bearing material. A bunch of glitter. See that right there? Glitter for, focus. Glitter for everyone. All bearing material, I think. Yeah, she's done. Okay, let's go, uh, let's finish getting that uh, pan off. Dave got it started. 
we get the pan removed and then we're gonna find out if it's bearings or something else that died inside of this engine. Okay, so the pan's pretty loose. Dave was uh, pulling the, uh, the bolts out of it. We need to pry bar it down from that backside. Yeah. Here, I'll hold on to this. You pry it. Oh, never mind. Gravity got it. There we go. Ooh, there's metal everywhere in here. Look at that, chunks of it. Big old chunks of it. I wonder if someone threw bearings in this, hoping that would save it. And uh, and they did not. Look at all that. That's the forbidden glitter. Yeah, she's done. Okay, let's get this uh, oil pickup out of the way. And once this thing's gone, we'll pull the pump out. We'll get that thing loose. And then we can try to figure out uh, which one of these bearings is letting go. Yeah, the crank's up there a little bit. It's kind of buried. See right here, there's the crankshaft. There's one of the connecting rod caps. Mm. Yeah, it looks like this is a skirted block, so getting uh, getting up to that crank may be a bit of a challenge, but we're gonna try it out. Okay, 14 coming in here. Yeah, it's flinging on me. That was gross. This thing's heavy. Dang. It's like a 30 pound whatever that is. Woo. Okay, so I've got a wrench on the uh, crankshaft right here. Let's try to turn this around. And draining oil everywhere. I'm gonna turn it around and we're gonna take these uh, rod caps loose real quick and see if we've got a rod bearing that we lost or if it's a main bearing if it's a main we're not gonna be able to get to it because we'll have to take this entire block skirt off which means we have to take off the exhaust and the engine mounts and all the accessories so we'd have to save that one for the uh the post post destruction tear down after we get the engine out of the vehicle okay, let's see what's under this one even a bearing in there oh there it is there's the bearing that came off uh, relatively easily too oh yeah look at that one smoked very scored up not okay you know what we should do let's put these back together with no bearings in it and start it again see what happens kind of tempted just to just for science you know just to see what it does I am going to put these back on so we can turn this over later uh, in order to uh, actually get the engine apart. Let's go around to the next one. One of them is destroyed very heavily and I'd like to find that specific one. We might have a winner right here on number two that had a lot of motion in it. Oh yeah, she done. Look at that. That is uh, very, very scored up and I can't even find the bearing. There is no bearing in here. There's nothing left of this non-bearing. Look at that. That's pretty bad. Actually, I'm gonna rephrase. That's horribly bad. That is absolutely destroyed. There is no bearing material left uh, inside of this rod cap right here. Let's see check that one that one feels okay that one didn't have any motion in it and I can't get to number four just yet well I'll tell you what let's go ahead and throw this cat back on number two thread that guy in we'll keep going we'll pull the remainder of the uh, the other two off real quick just to be thorough make sure it's a uh, multiple bearings here
Come on. Come out. Come all the way out. It is my will. There it is. And that one, that's just as junk. Got all that copper showing. That one's worn out to nothing. Yeah, this thing's definitely suffered a, uh, a low oil or an oil loss type of event somehow, some way. Put that cat back on. Let's go around to the next one, number four. We'll check number four out. of it too. Mirror bearing. There we go. And this one. Yeah, that's just as bad. Scored up. Low oil pressure. This vehicle definitely had an oil out event. And this engine is kaput. So investigating that big giant assembly that was there uh, originally, we can see that there is a, uh, there's a gear right here on the crank, which I'm assuming runs... Where'd that thing go, Dave? There it is. Yeah, that's gonna act on... That's gonna act on this gear right here, so this is definitely like a, uh, a balancing shaft of some sort, or a balancing assembly. Yeah, so you've got the two counter-rotating shafts. So that's there to take harshness and vibration uh, out of the engine. Yeah, there's a lot of little motors that have that. It's a four-cylinder thing. What are you going to do? Well, all right, guys. I think we found the source of the noise and the destruction, and I concur with my uh, customer's assessment. Uh, this thing does need an engine, which we have one right here. So we're going to go ahead, uh, finish draining the fluids out of this. We've got to get the cradle unbolted, and we're going to pull the entire engine and drivetrain assembly out of this vehicle. Uh, we're actually going to take the vehicle off the engine assembly. So what we do is lower this thing down, set the... Hey, wait a minute. This doesn't even have a cradle. There's a whole another way to doing this one. Yeah, there's no, there's no full on subframe here. Okay, yeah, we don't have to do it that way. Yeah, I was totally wrong. We had we had a Mazda, a different Mazda in here a few months ago, and it had a full on subframe all the way over. We just dropped it out, set it on jack stands, unbolted it, and then picked the car up off of the assembly, uh, similar to that Cadillac Northstar. But this one, this one's gonna come out a different way. That's fine though, we have the tools, we have the knowledge, we have the equipment. Stay tuned for future updates on this particular Mazda. It's gonna close this video out right now. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about this blown up engine in the comment section down below. Uh, do not forget to say hi to Dave while you guys are down there. Say hi Dave. Yeah, say hi to Dave. Give us a thumbs up, like button, and a subscribe if you have not already to the channel. That way you will not miss out on any future content uh, such as this. See you guys later in a video, in a transmission.